In question 2 of this series, where we find the maximum value of a directional derivative in 2D, we're asked, chemotaxis is the chemically directed movement of organisms up a concentration gradient that is in the direction in which the concentration increases most rapidly. The slime mold Dictostelium discodium exhibits this phenomenon. In this case, single-celled amoeba of this species moves up the concentration gradient of a chemical called cyclic AMP. Suppose the concentration of cyclic AMP at the point xy in the xy plane is given by the function shown on your screen. If you place an amoeba at the point 3 and 1, determine in which direction the amoeba will move if its movement is directed by chemotaxis. So what we'll do is find the gradient of this function by first taking the partial derivative with respect to x and y. So we have the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. The derivative of this is easy to find. In fact, I'll rewrite it so that we have 4 bracket x plus y plus 1 raised to the power of negative 1. This is nearly identical to that. Taking the derivative of this, remember y and 1 are constants. So we use the power rule. 4 times negative 1, x plus y plus 1, subtracting that by 1, it's negative 2. Evaluating this at 3 and 1, you should get negative 4 over 25. And the partial derivative with respect to y is identical to this. It's the same thing. So evaluating it at 3 and 1, again, should give you negative 4 and 25. So our gradient vector, which we'll represent as the gradient of f at x, y, is negative 4 over 25. Remember, this is the x component, and the y component is negative 4 over 25. So that right there is the gradient vector. And this direction is where the amoeba moves the fastest. That's approximately equal to negative 4 over 25 is negative 0 0.16 and negative 0 0.16. So in the direction of negative 0 0.16 and negative 0 0.16 is where it's going to move the fastest. So there you have it. That is how to find the maximum value of a directional derivative in 2D. In our next series of videos, we'll do the exact same thing, but with 3D functions. We'll see you soon.